this is my last tag video for this year and this was Tim Holtz's original inspiration. Love that uh, reindeer um, die. I don't happen to have it so my tag's not going to look like this one but I'm going to take a lot of inspiration from his original tag. So as usual I'm starting out with a piece of card that measures three inches by six inches and then using my little tag template just to trim the ends. So I start out with my base tag. So Tim used a new product, product called Frosted Film, which is a um, acetate that's kind of frosted from what I could see uh, on the tutorial. But I'm going to use a bit of packaging as I haven't got any frosted film and I'm going to make it into frosted film myself. So just trimming off the edges. If you do this with any uh, acetate packing, just be a little bit careful because things do get a little bit sharp and uh, they are a little bit awkward. I probably could have done with getting a bigger pair of scissors which would have made life a little bit easier. Now I did in initially think that I would use that little um, space at the top where the shop would hang these uh, packages up uh, for the top of my tag but as it happens it doesn't end up sitting very central so I come up with a different plan and that's something that's uh, quite good fun with making these tags that quite often you start off going in one direction and then something happens and it takes you in a completely different one. So once I'd got off the worst of the um, edges of the acetate then I just trimmed it to size using my guillotine. So you can see here the acetate little hole at the top isn't central on the top of my tag so that's not really much use to me and I think I'm going to work with it and then I think no and I chop that little area off and then that makes my acetate a little bit too short for my tag. So just thinking about that for a little while, it's mulling over in my brain, am I going to keep it like that or am I going to come up with a different solution? So the frosted film look can be achieved by taking a piece of sandpaper and what I did was I just brushed the sandpaper in one direction, so I went diagonally across the whole tag and you can see it's starting to go cloudy and then once I'd gone in one direction, I came across at the opposite diagonal. I'm just thinking about how frosty I actually want the tag to be and then I decide I'm just going to go the whole hog and I'm going to sand both sides and I'm just running it lightly around the edges of the tag just to make sure that there are no sharp edges. So Tim used a combination of distress paint and distress sprays to create his background using the paint as a bit of a resist. So I'm creating a snowy background with my picket fence distress paint and then once I've got my splatters all over my tag then I'm going to dry that paint and then once I add the ink to the tag you'll notice that the white of the paint resists the ink. So just making sure everything is dry. It takes a little while because there are actually little tiny blobs of paint rather than a smooth, thin coat of paint. And then I'm opening two brand new colours to my Distress Stain connect collection. <laughs> I'm still busy collecting Distress Stain and already Distress Sprays are out. So I've got some Evergreen Bow and some Peacock Feathers and I'm just going to blend them together until I achieve the tone of colour that I want. I'm keeping it quite vibrant because that frosted acetate is going to dull things down a little bit. You can see those uh, little tiny white splatters have appeared from beneath that coating of ink. So that everything uh, goes down and is muted by the frosted film. And then I'm just flicking a little bit of water over that inky surface which just lifts the ink from the surface of the tag and I'm blotting that away and that just gives me another little layer of texture. And then I'm coming in with the dauber of the distress paint and I'm just lightly dragging the paint across the edge of the tag to create a little bit of a frame. So I dried off the first layer and then came in and darkened it up a little bit by traveling around the tag a second time. And 
so I appear to have a few little splatters on my tag <laughs> but that was easily fixed with another little rub down with the sandpaper I've just been and visited my cuddle bug and I've run the piece of frosted film that I made through the cuddle bug using this snowflake embossing folder and that looks really nice on the tag but I just want the snowflakes to stand out a little bit more so keeping the door at the top of the distress paint really dry so I've not tried to release any more paint I'm just running running the top of the door across those snowflakes really lightly it just makes them stand out a little bit more so coming in with a little second coat of the paint and I'm really happy with how that's standing out against the blue background and then just as I did on the main tag I'm just going around the edges and it just adds to that little frosty snowy look that we've got going on now thinking about that little strip at the bottom and where I'm going to put things like words on my tag I was wondering what to use in place of the gorgeous reindeer dye so lots of things that I didn't have this time but it really doesn't stop you playing along with this challenge you will see hundreds and hundreds of brilliant ideas um, every month to um, adapt your stash to play along and achieve the look or the feel that uh, Tim originally inspired us with on his tag so I'm thinking about how I'm going to add my words I'm going to keep the same words that Tim used which was winter wishes and uh, I'm thinking of putting them in this little strip so I've just chopped about an inch off of the bottom of the tag and then spread them apart and that way I can use the uh, little strip that it creates across the bottom of the tag to add one of my words I'm going for winter at the moment, can't find a T and then I decided actually I'll put wishes in this strip and uh, I'll create the word winter with something else. I was just thinking how to adapt that uh, T just to make it a little bit longer when I decided you know what, I'm going with wishes it's much easier. <laughs> So thinking about what I could use as my main image on my tag, I'm going with the snowman. I've got my snowflakes, so it just seems appropriate to use this gorgeous stamp. This is one of Tim Holtz's blueprint uh, Christmas stamps, and uh, it actually hasn't, hasn't been used yet. He's been sitting in my collection waiting <laughs> for me to uh, ink him up, and you can see how fab he looks. He's just the right size for my tag, so I've inked him up with the... Oh, what's it called? I use it all the time. Oh, black archival ink, that's it. And then I've got a couple of colours of Distress Ink and I'm going to watercolour my little snowman and bring him to life. You'll see that I use my Distress Inks a lot to colour in when I'm card making or when I'm making my art journal pages. I really, really like my Distress Inks. They're easy to use and they've got a great versatility to them so I'm uh, gradually building up the shading on the sides of the hat and you literally just squish a little bit of the ink out onto your mat and then use a, a damp brush to put or to paint with the ink and uh, really once you've got your little collection of distress inks it means that you can use them not only for stamping but for lots of other things I think I'm gonna have fun cutting out his delicate twiggy arms if you wanted to do this and I'm going to be decoupaging this snowman up you could actually make his arms just a little bit thicker you could add a, an extra black line or two and then fill those in as if it was part of the original stamp it would just make the cutting out a little bit easier and make the likelihood of you uh, cutting off one of his arms a little bit less so I'm using also a little bits sort of distress stain so this is the um, evergreen bow and I'm colouring in his scarf. So I'm limiting my palette to the white, black, red, and then this sort of turquoisey green or turquoisey blue. Hmm. Or is that why we use the word turquoise? <laughs> you can see on the actual snowman's body, I did use a really watered down uh, version of the colour just to add a little bit of shadow around those snowballs that make up the snowman just looks a little bit nicer than just the plain uh, white 
cardstock. Now, in order to strengthen his arms, I've got a plan to actually use glossy accents on these small little twig pieces, and hopefully that would make them strong enough mm -hmm. to withstand uh, being or sitting on top of my tag. So I like to get rid of the bigger pieces of card first and then come back in and just tri trim away at that smaller detail. I find it makes it less likely that I'm going to cut something off. I'm just darkening up the shadow slightly. Now the next technique I'm going to use on my tag is something that Tim used on his to glitter his stag, but um, I like to use rock candy distress glitter over stamped images because you can see the stamped image through the glitter, which is a really nice effect. It really does make something look frosty and I'm not losing any of the details of my stamped image because the glitter is clear, it just looks like you've coated it with sugar. So it's a really nice effect, particularly great for snowmen. So you can see here, I've not got much left. I've been using it well this year, and uh, particularly this month. And uh, I've used it a few times for this technique on over the top of stamped images. So just having a little look at my snowman, thinking which details I'm going to stamp again. And I've decided to go with raising the holly on his hat as well as the brim of his hat I'm trying to make that look like it's standing out his little carrot nose and his scarf so I'm just on the scrap bits of paper that I cut off when I was cutting the main image out just re-stamping those sections that I'm going to cut out and uh, raise on my snowman I'm very mindful in this video of not making it too long because I just realised when I got to the end of editing my last video, which I haven't yet uploaded onto YouTube, it's uploaded and sitting there waiting for me to make it public, but it's an hour long. And I thought, oh, should I cut this down? But there were so many different techniques in it that I have left it at an hour long, but just with a little bit of a warning at the beginning that you might want to watch <laughs> that particular video in a couple of sittings to uh, make sure that you don't fall asleep halfway through. <laughs> so I'm just recolouring those little details that I'm going to cut out again. And I'm just going to decoupage those up onto the top of the snowman image that I frosted earlier. I'm being really careful with the teeny tiny Holly. <laughs> so on the slightly bigger item which is the scarf I'm just using a couple of foam pads to raise that and then I'm going to use some silicone glue to attach the tiny elements. Just squeeze a little tiny dot of silicone glue onto my mat and then I'm using this barbecue skewer to add a little bit of the glue where I want to attach those small pieces. So attaching the holly and the brim of the snowman's hat and his little carrot nose. Just turning it carrot coloured. <laughs> And it just makes him a little bit more animated when he's sitting on my tag. Not sure where he's going to end up yet, but I think he's going to look nice. Before I put him to one side, I'm just going to add a little bit of glossy accents to the holly, to his nose and to his twiggy arms. And on his arms it will have the extra benefit as well as giving them a little bit of shine just to strengthen them slightly. Tim used his sewing machine to attach the frosted film to his tag and I'm going to do the same and I'm going to make a feature of it by actually stitching in black. So I'm going over the little piece first and then coming up and around so it's creating another frame around the outside of my tag.
as I started this I was holding my breath a little bit because this is only a little teeny tiny sewing machine and I wasn't sure if it was going to cope with stitching through the acetates. I am, am having to guide it a little bit to make sure that it doesn't stop and stitch in one place but it is working and um, the stitches perhaps aren't all joined together at the back but I'll add a little bit of glue to that and make sure that they stay in place but it looks okay I'm happy with how it looks I'll tie off those ends in a moment and I just want to go across the two pieces either side of the strip so again that it frames where my words are going to end up I have had a few people comment on this machine on previous videos. It's something I've had a very long time and it sat a very long time in its little box and uh, didn't see the light of day for a couple of years after I bought it. And I did hear lots of um, sort of people saying that, 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 that it wasn't very good and it's not worth using. But I found that it's useful for what I want it to do. I wouldn't say it's great. You can see here it easily unravels so you have to be quite careful about stitching in. It, it kind of stitches with a chain stitch. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's even available anymore but it has turned out to be something that I'm using on a fairly frequent basis because I like the look of those stitches. I don't really want to be using my main sewing machine to do it although I suppose I could um, so it works for what I want it to do. It's got its limitations but as long as you um, counteract those like I add glue to the back of the stitches I take, take a little bit of time to tie in the ends like I'm doing here making sure that the chains don't unravel and then uh, it just it does the job and I really enjoy the look that uh, adding stitching to projects brings. Now you can see I'm just adding the glue to make sure all of those ends stay in place. So amongst my scrapbooking stash I found these little letter stickers. Actually it's a brand new sheet so I'm easily finding the word winter and just deciding where actually they are going to end up. Now I noticed that as I put these across here and I was going to put them above the word wishes but then where do I put my little snowman? So I'm not happy with that, so I've decided to make it a little bit like a crossword puzzle. So I'm going to put them up the edge of the tag. So winter going vertically and wishes going horizontally. And then I've got plenty of room to put my snowman on the right hand side. Now I want to add a little bit more red to my tag so I'm going to colour my little wooden letters with some festive berries distress stain and once I'm happy with the shade of colour just making sure that they're all dry and uh, each time you see me drop these letters it's because the heat gun has <laughs> gotten a little bit too close to my fingers so just drying them off slightly because I'm a little bit impatient to get on with the next bit which is to add the glue to the surface of the letter. You will get a little bit of a bleed from the distress stain and then just sugar coating them with my distress glitter. And then attaching them in the little strip across the bottom of the tag. So I wanted to use some industrial stickers on my tag the way that Tim did so just deciding where I can use a little bit of this strip to add some embellishment to my tag. So these stickers are really nice, they're really quite substantial and they're very very tactile and they're slightly dull which makes them great for any kind of vintage look, vintage project or steampunk project. They've you know they're quite a pleasing product to work with, they've got plenty of body. I've decided to add a black frame around my tag which is uh, pretty obvious really as black is one of my highlight colours or contrast colours I probably should say. So I just make a pro 
probably about three and three eighths, six by six and three eighths piece of black card and then trim it to the tag shape. And I thought I would just include a little strip of the stickers just poking out in between the two layers. I'm just using my fingers just to dull down that stickiness of the tiny pieces that are going to be sticking outside the edge of my tag. If you've got something that's really sticky you can always just dust them off a little bit with some talc. And then I'm attaching the tag in position. And I'm really giving it a good press down to make sure that the two layers are joined together. Now I think that I need just another little touch of red at the top and the ideal way to do that is to make my little reinforcer out of a little piece of red card. So I'm colouring that again with the Festive Berries Distress Stain and then punching out a half inch circle. And I'm just attaching that to the top of the tag and I decided to make it look like a little piece of tartan so I'm going to take my black pen and add some lines to the circle. But before I do that, I'm just putting my snowman in place with some foam pads. And I've just very, very lightly shaped him with my fingers. And then here comes the faux tartan. I just thought it broke up the area of red a little bit more. And then it's time to add Tim's original tag to the back of mine. Anyone watching this series will know I like to add the original inspiration, which was uh, Tim Holt's 12 Tags of 2014 Challenge. We've been making tags all year, and uh, this is the very last one in the series. And I'm really hoping to get this video up before I have to give my um, computer to the menders. When I very first got this machine, its light blew out in the back lit screen right at the bottom left hand corner and to be honest it doesn't really affect me at all but it's guarantee is about to run out so I might as well get it fixed and it really has you can see I've left it till the last minute uh, to relinquish my computer it really has uh, been a bit of a pain to let it go because I use it all the time as you know to make my videos for my business and uh, it really is going to be a little bit of a, of a pain so letting it go at Christmas uh, is probably the easiest because obviously we're all doing other things at uh, this time of year and uh, the holiday period is hopefully the time when I will least miss it. I'll still be able to keep up with what's going on in my blog with my phone um, but uh, I won't be able to post any videos for that period so I'm getting a few in now before I didn't want to miss this one because otherwise I would have failed my whole year would have <laughs> of making tags and I'd have failed at the last hurdle so I'm really hoping to get this one up tonight and uh, uploading tomorrow so I'm thinking about what to what kind of bow to add to the top of my tag and I want it to be nice and, and fluffy but I think that this white I'm not too sure about it I'm going with it for a moment I wasn't keen on the white ribbon and was thinking about colouring it but then I remembered I've got this very, or as you can see here, this very pale turquoise American seam binding. So I've just made a lovely fluffy bow by winding a few, um, a few what, winds, rounds of ribbon around my fingers and then tying them in the middle to create the little bow and then using the ribbon that I tied around the middle of the bow to attach the little fluffy bow to the top of my tag. So I'm just starting to think about those finishing details. So I'm adding a few little tiny iridescent gems to that metallic strip. And I remembered saving some lovely silver snowflakes. Now you can be the judge here because I added two of those silver snowflakes to my tag and I just wasn't sure. I'm not sure whether I thought they were too big I'm not sure whether I thought they were too bright, but I just, I kind of like them and then I just wasn't sure. So you can see here, I'm just plodding on and uh, adding a little bit of glossy accents to 
the 12 tags logo. Now still thinking something is not quite right. I think it's something to do with the bow, but uh, that's not going to work. It's much too big. Keep looking at them snowflakes. <laughs> is it the bow? Something I'm not happy with. Fluff up the bow a bit more. No, it's not the bow. Now I think, yeah, I'm going to call it finished. No, I'm going to take this bit off. Is it that bit that I don't like? Perhaps just put the snowflake back on with that. No, I like the silver on there, so I'm sticking that back on. <laughs> and luckily, I can still see the gem that I peeled off to put the snowflake on. I'm sticking that back in position with a little bit of glossy accents. And then I think I'm going to add gems instead. So I'm just adding a few little clear gems to each of my embossed snowflakes. And I'm using a few little different sizes. And then I think just for good measure, I'm going to add one of the biggest gems that I've got into the centre of the bow. So let me know what you think. Did you like the big snowflakes or do you like the gems? Now, I end up liking the gems so I'm going to keep that and call that my last tag of this year finished. So before I go I would just like to recommend 12 tags of 2014 and hopefully, I'm not sure, but there may be a 12 tags of 2015 and if there is, why not pop along and join in this fun tag challenge. You get to explore all the stash that you've got at your disposal and learn lots of fab new techniques from the lovely Tim Holt. So pop along to his blog and check out what everybody else has been making this month. As I always say, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button, the share button. Leave me a comment below. I love to hear from you. I always do try to get back to everyone, but uh, sometimes, as in this time of year, it's a little bit difficult, but I get there eventually. So if you've got a question in particular, I definitely will make time to answer any queries you might have. So as I've been mentioning in my last few videos, my computer is off to the menders. Um, and I will not be posting any more videos for this year. I know it's not very long, it feels like a long time to me. I'm definitely going to miss sharing uh, more creative videos with you, but I will be back in the new year. So all that's left for me to say is I hope that you all have a very Merry Christmas or whatever kind of holiday you're celebrating, that you are having a lovely time with your family and friends. And I look forward to sharing more creativity with you very soon. Thank you very much for your support throughout the year and thank you for watching. As usual I am sharing a couple of links. This is a link to my 2013 tags and my 2014 tag playlists. This is the link to my Etsy shop where you can learn to make a gorgeous two-tier cake or a three-tier cake cake or a single tier cake. Now, it depends what takes your fancy. This is a fun project to give to a friend or a loved one on a special occasion. If you're looking for mixed media and altered art journal inspiration then why not check out this playlist and you'll find this page among the videos.